I won't take a lot of time tonight because we do have a meeting. But I really would like to hear a testimony of praise from somebody. We've got one, Kathy. Well, and that's what family is all about, you know. I saw it in his face. He was, you can't help but have joy, you know, when you got people that care about you. And and thing about a church family is they genuinely, we genuinely care for each other. It's not a superficial type of thing. So, pray. yeah. That is a good testimony. Well, like I said, I won't. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ellie. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the prayer. Uh, daughter came back to go to school this week so far. Oh, good. Yeah. So, uh, good. Beth got back to school. <clears throat> well, the Lord will answer prayer, too, you know. Yeah. As long as it's, like we said this morning, fervent and and robust, you know, and sincere, actually, is what the Bible's trying to tell us, so. Well, let's get started. I won't keep you too long. We're going <coughs> to have that meeting this evening. <coughs> Appreciate everybody turning out. I'm gonna, I want us to turn uh, to the uh, book of John in chapter 21, something that's really dear to my heart, and uh, just want to pass a few little things on and ask us some questions. I know we asked a lot of questions this morning, but uh, we've got three more questions we want to answer tonight. But it's good that we are can be assured of our salvation if we're in line, you know, with what Scripture says. And that's that's what Jesus said. If you love me, follow my commands there. 1984, Tina Turner released a song and you see the title of it there. What's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with 1984? Some of you don't uh, remember her, but many do. What? Huh? Okay, okay, I'm just, hey, I'm trying to be nice. A chorus of which goes this way. What's love got to do with it, got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? See, a secondhand emotion. What's love got to do with it, got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Isn't that the, the how the, the world views love and the world views itself, you know, you go into a relationship, in a world relationship, expecting the worst and usually getting the worst because we're not able to love each other. And uh, that's what she was talking about. It's human love is based on human emotion. It's based on feelings. And, and that's why we know as uh, believers that <coughs> true love is supernatural. It's not natural. It's supernatural. It comes from God. And we talk about it so much that, that, that God's love is a sacrificial love. It's a love that puts others' needs ahead of one's own. Put other people first. And that's what we're looking at. And I say all that to say, thus, a proper relationship with God, that begins with sacrificial love. It's not, the Bible says, not that we love God, that He loved us and gave His Son for us so it's a love it's a sacrificial love and he bestows that love on us through mercy and grace but along with that when we accept that love accept what jesus christ did on that cross that barrier between man and god is broken the sin barrier i call it it's done away with because God cannot be in a relationship with any uh, any type of sin because of his righteousness so what that begs the question then how is my relationship with God that's what I want you to think about tonight how, how is your relationship with God only you know well God knows but you know but let, let's let's look at that and uh, want to ask three questions to evaluate that relationship. So, to get started, if you're there, John uh, 21. We're going to work through 
uh, 18th verse, kind of skip around a little bit, but uh, John 21, 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise he showed himself. They were together, Simon Peter, Thomas, uh, called Didymus, Nathaniel of Cana uh, in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. So there's seven of them together. Verse 3, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they said unto him, well, we'll go with you. They went forth and entered in the ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Heavenly Father, show us tonight uh, who you are and that you want us to know more about you. Lord, let us be willing to grow closer to you. And Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that allows this wonderful relationship we have with you. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross to bring us here. And Lord, let us grow with you. And it's in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. So there they are. There's, it's after the resurrection. Uh, they were waiting. Jesus told them to wait, and, and he would uh, be in contact with them. He'd appeared a few times, but they got bored, evidently, and it's going fishing. But also, I guess, give old Peter some credit. That was his job, too. They were fishermen. So he went back to work, we could say, or he went recreational fishing. But they caught nothing. Verse 4. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. So uh, this first question, going off of uh, verse 4, do you know Jesus? We, we talked about that this morning, the difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus. See, many people know about Jesus. They know, <coughs> they know that Jesus is the Son of God. They know that Jesus died and paid the sin debt for, for human sin. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him or through him. <clears throat> so people, you notice I didn't say they believe. They, they know. A lot of many people know he's the son of God. They know he died for uh, and paid the sin debt. <clears throat> they also know... <clears throat> That the Bible tells us in, in Romans uh, 14, 3, that there is no man is good, no, not one. And, and that uh, there, there's a law of sin and death. It's all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Romans 3, 23. And the wages of that sin, what we've earned from our sin is death. So there's a law of sin and death. <clears throat> People know that. But this, is, this intellectual knowledge of Jesus, the knowing about Jesus, it doesn't bring a person into this proper relationship where we need to be. <clears throat> you know, I ask a lot of people, <coughs> or I ask people a lot of the times, how, just that. How, how is your walk with the Lord? What is your relationship with Jesus? And, and surprisingly, get a lot of different answers. A lot of different answers. Of course, I'm... Uh, hard-headed and I'm always out talking to lost people because that's who needs to know the Lord but you'd be surprised at uh, the opinions and the uh, the way people perceive heaven and the way to heaven in a relationship with God that that Jesus said there's only one way right he is the way the truth and the life no one comes unto the father except through him so the intellectual knowledge is good but <coughs> but in, until it's put into action it, it it means nothing it doesn't count for anything so <coughs> uh john goes on here in verse five and six said they caught nothing and jesus <coughs> showed on the shore they didn't recognize him he told them if you if you read uh, here in verses five and six that that it's all on the other side of the boat well it, they did and here boy they, they broke the nets and uh they took all they could to bring the bring them into the side of the ship and i pick it up here in verse seven then <clears throat> therefore that disciple whom jesus loved said unto peter it's the lord see they had drifted off enough into the world fishing that it took an act of god a miracle to get bring them back into the the real world the spiritual the spiritual world <clears throat> uh now when si simon peter 
heard it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat around him <clears throat> and did cast himself into the sea. He was heading to Jesus, wasn't he? He knew Jesus. He knew Jesus. And, that, and, that, and that's what I'm talking about. Uh, he, he, Peter believed in his heart that Jesus died for his sins. He knew that. And he, he dove out of the boat. He swam to get to Jesus on the, on the shore. And, and when people genuinely see themselves as the sinners they are, you, you might, they might know that they're a sinner, but until a person actually sees him or herself as a sinner, they're not going to take any action on that. And even, even just that, well, if they don't see God as righteous, if they just see him as the man upstairs or, or some good uh, friend or like that, that, you know, until they see they've sinned, not against you and me, but against God Almighty, then they might take action. That action might be to God or away from God. But knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus, not just knowing about, requires action, uh, active belief. <clears throat> For if we confess our sins, we said this morning, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you think back in your Bible knowledge, it wasn't long before this that G uh, Peter had denied Jesus three times. And now that Jesus, he, 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 Peter sees a second chance, really. Uh, yeah, I, I call it. But yeah, so he dove in the water and he's going to swim to Jesus. He's going to make this thing right. Why? Because he knows Jesus had told him that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that's what Peter wanted to accomplish. He was going to see his Lord. <coughs> so I think that's a pretty good testimony of, of somebody knowing God in, with, with Peter. Now the others, <coughs> they were still a little concerned about their fish, so they, they were gathering up the fish, but they were heading in. You know, they were heading in. You know, Jesus died for the entire human race, but that sin has to be confessed. And... And we're looking at our relationship with the Lord. It's not only initially our sin is confessed, but to remain in fellowship with God. We can't have <coughs> habitual sin. We can't have the sin in our life. Yeah, we all sin, but we recognize it and we get forgiven of it. And that keeps us in fellowship with God. That's the proper relationship we need with God. <coughs> and only when we ask Jesus into our heart do we be begin to know him more. We have to invite him. We have to accept that offer. We have to accept what he's done for us. And because he lives in the genuine believer, thus we're able to grow. When we talk about maturing in the faith and, and uh, growing spiritually, what we're talking about is just getting to know God better. Getting to know him better, not just knowing about him. So let's read on here. Look at the, in verse 8. <coughs> and the other disciples came in a little ship, uh, but as it were, 200 uh, cubits, uh, dragging the net of fishes with them. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire with coals there, and the fish laid there upon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, uh, to land full of fishes, and 153 for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto him, Come and dine. They, they're still worried about <clears throat> what if, you know. We need to keep these fish, and we need to get them cleaned. And, and that Jesus already had everything prepared. The meal was there. The meal was there waiting for him. Je uh, come and dine, Jesus said. And none, now listen to this in verse 12. And none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. See, we need to be at a point, we need to know the Lord <clears throat> so well that the discernment that he gives us, we don't have to question, God, is that you? We should know. Uh, well, our answer should be yes. <laughs> you know, it's not, is that you? Yes, sir. And if it's, of the, if it's not of the Lord, the Lord's still going to look out for you. But it's usually of the Lord, and, and we got to have that discernment. we got to know Jesus well enough to know that's of the Lord with Terry and I were just talking before church about a, something that happened and, and 
and, and Terry just made the statement, well, it's, it's providential. That's of God. I know it's of God, and I agree with him. That's knowing the Lord. So with that uh, context there, let's ask the next question. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? <clears throat> the more we know Jesus, the more we love him. If you know a little bit about Jesus, then you're going to love him a little bit. But that just goes with anything. The more you know something, the more that you love it. The more you know somebody, the more you love them. And, and, and it just grows and grows. Verses uh, 15 through 17 should be very familiar with you, to you. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, put that in the back of your mind, lovest thou more than these and that? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again, Jesus saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Jesus said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved <clears throat> this time, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And Peter said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. There's uh, three things in that passage that stand out to me. <clears throat> First of all, if you notice in verse uh, 15 and 16 and 17, Jesus addresses Peter by his earthly name, Simon, son of Jonas. Simon, son of Jonas. If you know, if you remember, Jesus had changed Peter's name. Gave him a spiritual name. And by the way, the Bible said we're all going to have a different name by which Jesus knows us. But remember, that's how Simon became Peter. But here he's addressing him as a, a earthly, worldly. I, I just kind of stands out to me uh, that, that, that what's Jesus trying to point out to him? You know, did Peter get, did Peter get it? Well, I don't think he did, because uh, we're going to see the, uh, another thing that he pointed out. He said, the next thing, Jesus said, did you love me more than these? In verse 15, do you love me more than these? What was he talking about? The fish? They seemed pretty important to Peter. He went back to, I mean, the meal was already cooked, but he went back to count. He counted the fish. They seemed real important to him. How about the uh, guys with him? Were they more important than Jesus? <clears throat> I think you're seeing where I'm heading there. With those that's with him, see the world, his work, his friends, his recreation. Verse 3 there, <clears throat> Peter, when he said, I, Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. And they said unto him, well, we'll go with you. You see the influence that Peter had over people? Peter had, had, had regressed <clears throat> into this uh, worldly thinking and took people with him, took people with him. <clears throat> and the third thing that I see, which is very important, and we want to elaborate on it a little bit, is three times Peter never actually says, Jesus, I love you. Lord, I love you. It's always, you know I love you. You know I love you. You know all things. You know I love you. What about a spouse that has to ask the other, do you love me? Yeah. Or does the spouse want to hear it come out voluntarily? Honey, I love you. I love you. What about Jesus? Is Jesus any different? We're a spouse to Jesus. The Bible says the church is the bride of Christ church is the bride of Christ so <coughs> the same way it would make you feel <coughs> if your spouse was always uh, you were always saying do you love me do you love me do you? and they never heard it uh, voluntarily think about that Jesus how Jesus feels 
because he, sh he said he loved me and he said he loved you when he took your sin, our sin, on himself and paid that penalty, paid those wages of sin. Jesus was saying, I love you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So do we, t do we tell Jesus we love him or do we just assume that he knows? Yeah, Jesus does. He knows all things. That's what Peter said. Lord, you know all things. But we need to say it. We need to say it. Well, Jesus knew, and, and he knows if uh, Peter, he knew Peter loved him. He, he knew that when he, when he jumped out of the boat. But, and he knows you love him. But I'm just saying, uh, I tell him all the time, Lord, I love you. Well, just out of love i guess or out, out of nothing so besides jesus knowing our hearts and our words our actions also show it jesus said in john 14 15 if you love me keep my commands that's what he was saying to peter feed my sheep if you love me keep my command so we should we should tell jesus if you love him you should tell him if you don't love him well, don't tell him but we should also through our obedience show him that we love him the husband uh, <coughs> might say to the wife well you know i love you the wife might say well you sure don't show it you know you hear that all the time you sure don't show it well jesus might be saying the same thing you, you say you love me yet you don't do what i tell you you don't show it we need to think about those things. We need to keep in mind, we're talking about the proper relationship with God. <coughs> so here, are you living your life the way you want to, or are you living it for Jesus? Are you living, uh, are you allowing Jesus to live his life through you? That, that's, uh, I guess, is the question. Are you chasing your personal desires or the desires of God? We talked enough this morning about mixing the two. We don't want to do that. We want we want the desires of God. Uh, often uh, misquoted verse, Psalm 37, uh, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, <coughs> and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, that, that's wide open for all kinds of heresy. But what it's saying is the desires of your heart should be God's desires. And if you commit yourself, You'll get those desires. And that's all. Our desires should be God's desires. Period. Jesus gives us only two commands. Matthew 22, 37 and 40. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Uh, Jesus said this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So there's your Christian walk. Love God with everything you got. Love your neighbor as yourself. Just like Kathy was talking about Roy, you know. We, we care, just care about each other. And you can't help but do it. I think it was Sunday school we, this morning we were talking about that. If you love the Lord with everything you got, then it's just going to be natural that you love other people. And it's going to show because you're going to be doing God's desires, and God's desires is to take care of, of his people. And, and let me ask you then, do, so do people see this in you? Do people see Christ in you? Do people see, well, there's something different about him. There's something different about her. I, 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 I try to, I want to get to the point to where people don't just question it, that they question me. What's different about you? Why do you care about me? Why are you down here talking to me, down here in, this, in these slums and, and in this bar? I want them to ask me that. And they have. People have asked me, and I tell them. And I'm honest. I love you. God loves you. And I want to show you the way to have a relationship with God. People need to see that in us, and they need to, you need to get to the point to where they ask you about it. And it's all about your love for Christ. It all comes back to your love for Christ. So with this uh, third question then, are you feeding Jesus' sheep? He asked Peter, <coughs> told Peter three times. He asked him if he loved me. Peter said, of course, you know I do. 
feed my sheep, feed my sheep, and feed my lambs one time. Well, all humans are Jesus' sheep. They're, some of them are potential sheep <laughs> because he wants to, he desires that none should perish, but all come to repentance. And, and we're to nourish, we're to feed those sheep. Well, we're doing that in one of two ways. We're either uh, poisoning them. That's a pretty strong word, ain't it? We're killing them by reflecting Jesus negatively. How, well, how, how can we do that? Well, <clears throat> claiming to be a Christian but not talking like one, claiming to be a Christian but not acting like one, uh, it, 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 actions and talk that dishonors Jesus, who's going to be interested in following that Jesus? They ain't going to hear nothing you got to say. And especially if it takes the step of, <clears throat> yeah, I'm a Christian, a Christian, but you're cussing like a sailor. Man, all of a sudden, and see, the problem with that is there, there are people like that. And if that's the only person, the only Christian that this unsaved person sees, what's his first thought? All Christians are that way. I had a man tell me out in front of the church the last week, and you call yourself a Christian. You know, he, it's a long story, but we, we just couldn't do for him what he demanded us to do. And you call yourself a Christian, see? All Christians are like that. That's how the world views us. So we've got to look like Jesus. We've got to talk like Jesus because we are. We're, we're Jesus. And that's what we do. We want to grow in Christ likeness. Now, we can poison them or we can nourish his sheep. Now, remember, I'm talking about the church family. I'm talking about unsaved people. I'm talking about people. We can nourish them by just the opposite, by reflecting Jesus in a positive way, in a way that people, man, tell me more about this Jesus. He did what for you? Yeah, he did. He, he gave me a new life. I'm born again. Can I be born again? Well, that's where you want to get a person in a conversation to where they ask that question. What must I do to be saved? That's where you want to lead people. Again, it's through our walk and our behavior. First Peter uh, 2 9, I like, says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Talking about the church. God's special possession. Man, do you see yourself that way? As a special possession of God. That you may declare the praises of Him. Who called you out of darkness and in to his wonderful light. See, here's what God will do. If he knows that you'll open your head and you'll talk of him and you'll glorify him. He'll put people in front of you. You ain't much you had to go out and find them. They'll come to you because God knows if I send them to Ben, Ben will glorify me. Or if I send them to so-and-so, I'm not going to send them over there because they just won't... Uh, they just won't glorify them, these people. See, that's how, that's how God works. That's the confidence that he, that, he has, that he has in his people. And that's where, we want to, that's where we want to be. People should see the change in us as well as the joy and peace we have. And, and interested in, that makes them interested in knowing they can have what you have. I had, uh, as you know, I was out west and had uh, diagnosed with, with lung cancer. And the, uh, they told me <laughs> that surgery would take care of it. Well, we sure can't do it here. You need to go home. Well, yeah, I want to let my daughters know. One's in California and one was in Florida at the time. She's in Virginia now. But I had to tell them on the phone at different times. Cause I didn't want to find out from somebody else. And I did. And uh, in the conversation, two different conversations similar this they both said about the same thing i said well how, how do you feel about that honey and she said because you sound so confident i feel good See, that's what i'm talking about and i did i knew i i knew i thought i'd be back there by now but i knew i was coming to florida i was gonna uh, get half that lung removed and i was going back to work i, I just knew it but that, by telling them and by, by just, and I didn't, well, intended, I just, that was just me. 
I, I had that confidence. But they, they, they heard that on the phone. And that gave them the confidence. And that's what we got to do with people. They've got to see. they got to hear things in us, see things in us. Not negative things, but nourishing, nourishing things. <coughs> so I told you I wanted to keep you long. To bring it all together, <coughs> in order to know Jesus, we have to believe that his work on the cross, key word, is the only <coughs> way to the proper relationship with holy and righteous God. <coughs> and you think, would well, you say, well, Brother Tim, why? What is that? Well, well, how do people think another way? Well, there's a lot of people that think they need to repay Jesus for what he did. And that's where they get involved with legalism and works and good works and this kind of thing. We can't ever repay Jesus. It, Jesus, the only repay he wants is, is what he said. If you love me, follow my commandments. But we get tangled up in that legalism and, and it's uh, going by the law, living by the law. See, we, we, <coughs> we still live by the Ten, com Ten Commandments. But we don't live... As to the legalist part of it, we live by the spirit of the law, the intent of the law, what God meant by what he intended by the law. In other words, we don't steal, not because we're going to get caught. <laughs> we don't steal because it'd break God's heart. Or I don't steal because I know it'd break God's heart. Or I don't uh, do this and I don't do that. It's a spirit. We live by the spirit of the law. It's for uh, consideration of God and, and love of God. That's why we don't do the things that he tells us not to do. It's not to stay in line. If I step out of line, well, God may get mad at me. He won't get mad at you. He'll break his heart. The Bible talks about grieving the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit. So let's stay away from living by the law. Let's live by the spirit of the law, the purpose of the law. If we love uh, Jesus... We should tell him every day. I think you all agree on that. And just don't assume that he knows. Tell him. Jesus, I love you. I love you. So, if we know and love Jesus, we can't help but nourish his sheep through our talk, our attitude, and our behavior. Because we're Christ-centered, we're focused on him our desires are his desires and everything that comes out of me whether it's my mouth whether it's my actions whether it's my attitude you know i was thinking uh somebody said something i don't know a couple of weeks ago about being mad are you mad and i thought i cannot remember the last time i was mad frustrated now <laughs> but i'm talking about mad you know what i mean angry and, and, and <clears throat> I've, we solved that problem, but I got thinking about that. And since prior, the, uh, since the 2005 Thanksgiving weekend, I've never been mad. I mean, really, really mad. And that's God. That ain't no Tim, because Tim's been mad in the past. But all that time, that's the attitude that I'm talking about. It's the Christ-centered attitude. That is living the Christian lifestyle. Is it a walk in the park? I don't want to get on that subject again. We brought that up in Sunday school and had a big fiasco with that. And we? Actually, it's a good question. I'm glad we brought it up. So anyway, do you love Jesus more than the ways and things of this world? Do you love Jesus more than this world, the ways and the things? Yeah. That includes the people. Jesus said that, th that the comparison between loving him and your mother, your father, your children, the comparison is you hate them the way you, and you, you love him. It doesn't mean you hate your family. What he was comparing was th that's how much you need to love Christ as it looks like you hate your family. No, we don't, because that, that, the Bible talks about loving our family and that kind of thing. But that was a pretty extreme example, I think. So more than the ways, the things, and the people of this world, <clears throat> do you tell him you love him, or does he just know?
that he did. You know I love you, Jesus. Are you negatively or positively feeding Jesus' sheep? Think about that next time you open your mouth or whatever. A fellow told me uh, I was doing some street ministry up in Tallahassee, and he was a drunk as old coot. <coughs> and he said, I, uh, I know Jesus. I tell people about Jesus. <laughs> I, said, I thought, I, well, I hope not with that breath. He said, I, he said, I, only reason, you know, brother, the only reason I go in these bars is so I can tell people about Jesus. Now, the uh, same thing I was doing, except I didn't have the alcohol. I'd go in a bar. You, uh, the Lord took me out of the bars, cleaned me up, and put me back in the bar room. But you know how much attention a person gets sitting at a, a tavern drinking a cup of coffee? Buddy, the people will come to you. Well, you had a problem with drink? Yeah, I sure did, uh, brother. You got a minute, I'll tell you about it. We don't get, get drunk with our, with our fellow friends and tell them about Jesus. If you're going to get drunk with them, just don't even say nothing. That's what I'm talking about, the poisoning part. You're not nourishing them at all. So uh, that's just a, an odd example, a weird example, but it's a, it's a true experience for me. So let's think about those things. <clears throat> let's tell Jesus that we love him. Let's learn to love him more. Let's grow closer to him. And, and we all know we grow closer to him by following his command. Obedience. Obedience. We, uh, you hear me say it all the time that success in your Christian walk is not all living by the do's and don'ts of the Bible. Success is measured by your obedience. Period. No matter what the outcome is is if god asks you to do something and by the way he's not going to ask you to do something he's not involved in it jesus said follow me that no matter what god tells you to do something it looks like nothing happened to you you do it number one it looks like nothing happened that don't matter you were successful why because you were obedient isn't that easy Success in Christian walk is measured by our obedience to Christ. And that's uh, a walk in the park. So uh, I wish I was here. We could argue about it some more. So anyway, by the way, uh, you keep, I keep talking about Sunday school. We have an adult Sunday school class, and we have a pretty good time. They haven't run me out yet, but uh, I think they're close to it. But we have a good time up to them, don't we, Lisa? So 9.30 every Sunday morning, if you're interested in that. Well... I guess we can have a meeting. Let me pray, and uh, uh, I'll turn it over to Elaine. Lord, we do love you. I know, Lord, we can love you more, and you know that too. Lord, that's why you gave us your word. That's why you gave us your Bible. That's why you united us together in, in, the, in your body and, and with you as the head, Lord. Let us come to know you more. Let us grow every day. Let us grow closer to you. Let us be obedient to you. And, Lord, let us love you more. God, we again, we thank you so much for, for uh, your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you so much for the, the pain and the suffering. We thank you for uh, removing and taking our shame and guilt of our sin. Lord, let us remember that when we uh, want to step out uh, into this world or step out into sin. The, the price you paid for that, Jesus. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. And it's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen.